I've partnered with Mermaid Zephira, Little Wing Studios, and Ken Stefan Toledo to bring you an entire line of Mermaid Echo Family merch. I'll leave a link below, and I think you guys are really going to love these products. Every single purchase supports me and these wonderful independent artists. So go check them out and rep your mermaidiness every day. Is that a word? I'm gonna make it a word. Hi fishies! Welcome back to my channel. Today we are filming a video I have been... We got a cat. He has a bell. You'll probably hear it the whole video. Uh, today we are filming a video that has been requested for years and I haven't made it yet. We'll get to why in a minute. We're gonna be talking through how to swim like a mermaid today. There are gonna be three parts to the video. First we're gonna talk about technique, then we're gonna talk about style, and last I'm gonna give you a few... Now he's eating food. I'm gonna take his collar off. Hopefully without this, we'll hear a little bit less. And last, we're gonna go over a few professional tips that you can use to look especially like a real mermaid that I use in my day-to-day -day professional mermaiding jobs. Before we begin, you should know that mermaiding is super individualized and you should practice the style that you think real mermaids might use in the real world, if they're real. We all imagine mermaids swimming differently and that's what makes mermaiding so creative and beautiful is seeing everybody's individualized expression in their own art. So this is just my way of doing things. It's my advice to you. There are thousands of other ways to do it. So I encourage you to try your own ways and see what works best for you. So I haven't made this video yet because there's a lot of debate around what proper mermaiding looks like. I'm also not a certified swimming instructor, but this channel is about making mermaiding easy and sharing everything that I've learned over the past seven years so you don't have to go through that trial and error process. But I know y'all really want this video, so please know that while I'm not a certified swim instructor, I'm not just making all this up. I do have some qualifications under my belt. So if you're wondering, who's this lady talking about this and how does she know what she's doing? I've owned and operated Mermaid Echo Entertainment LLC for the past four years. And in that time, I've performed and practiced in lakes, rivers, streams, pools, and even the Atlantic Ocean. I wrote the curriculum for and taught Mermaid Scholar School for two seasons. Prior to operating Mermaid Echo Entertainment, I was a competitive diver. My whole family are actually competitive swimmers. My grandma recently won the Senior Olympics for the YMCA. Hi hey, grandma, well done, you're awesome. I taught sailing, boating, kayaking, canoeing at the YMCA summer camp for five summers and I was even the waterfront director for a hot minute. I've been lifeguard certified for 18, 19, 20, six years. <laughs> and recently I got water safety certified in Ireland. In addition to mermaiding, I do a lot of other body movement type performances like belly dance and swim dance. So yeah, I hope that clears some things up a bit. I'm not a certified swimming instructor. Please don't think that I am. However, I do have similar experience. Number one, first we're gonna talk about technique. So the typical traditional technique that mermaids use is called the dolphin kick in competitive swimming. So I'm gonna teach you a couple of strategies that you can use to learn and practice the dolphin kick on land and in the water, well as a couple of red flags that you should watch out for that could be potential pitfalls for when you're learning the dolphin kick. Before we learn those strategies for practicing, let's just go over a basic understanding of what the dolphin kick is and how to move. So basically the dolphin kick is where your feet are together underwater and you are doing like a, a worm uh, to move forward like a dolphin. Now today I'm gonna argue that the dolphin kick actually starts from your shoulders not your head or your hands and I'll explain exactly why. For the best results from what I found the roll starts in your shoulders it moves down to your rib cage then down your tummy your hips your butt your legs your knees and out the feet. Think that there is a droplet of water on your chest and you have to roll that droplet of water all the way down just by moving your body and off the bottom of your feet. 
We do this motion over and over and over again, and voila, you start moving forward underwater, and that's the dolphin kick. Now, how do you do it? How do I practice it? And where do I start in the water? Well, the first strategy I'm gonna teach you comes from belly dance. There's a similar move in belly dance called an undulation, where the dancer undulates their whole body, and they use this to walk or move to different places on the dance floor. The way that we learn undulation in belly dance starts by spreading your feet apart on the floor, one in front of the other, and simply rocking back and forth and back and forth. On top of this basic movement, we can build a dolphin kick. When you rock forward onto your front foot, lift your chest up into the sky like there's a string attached to your rib cage that's pulling you straight up when you're on your front foot. When you rock back, start by just dropping the chest down again. So rock forward, up, back, drop. Forward, up, back, drop. The more you practice this, the more you can get into rolling that drop all the way through the rest of your body. So as you rock forward, the string pulls you up. When you rock back, your chest drops, then your stomach, then your hips. And as your knees begin to complete the roll, your chest begins a new roll. And we just do that again and again and again with the chest reaching up towards the sky on every front foot step and following that motion through the rest of your body as you rock to your back foot. As you get the hang of this, you can move your feet closer and closer together until you're standing with your feet right next to each other and you're just doing a dolphin kick in place. If this strategy doesn't work for you, luckily we have another strategy that I like to call the wall strategy. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna stand up against the wall with your back touching the wall and you're going to try to let only one part of your body touch the wall at a time. So start with your feet a little bit out away from the wall and the only thing touching it is the base of your neck. Push away from the wall and roll your neck out so it no longer touches it and now it's just your shoulder blades. Push the wall out from your shoulder blades, arch your back so that your lower back is touching the wall. Don't let your lower back touch the wall next, only your butt. Don't let your butt touch the wall next, only your calves, but be careful you might fall so be careful at that part and you might need to take a step forward. <laughs> and try that again and again and again and again. This will teach you how to make that roll travel from the top of your neck all the way down and out. It helps people who really need to feel a movement in order to understand it. Once you've practiced those or you think you're just ready to jump into the water, the last strategy I have for you is the go and pause. The go and pause is something I actually do to warm up before a mermaid session to make sure I have that really fluid, nice, beautiful mermaid swim. I have a clip of me doing this in my training video that I posted years ago, so I'm just gonna insert that clip here. But basically all you do is you do one mermaid kick, pause, let yourself reset, and do another one. This forces your body and your brain to complete a mermaid kick all the way from your head to your feet, or your tail, your fluke, sorry. <laughs> this way you can really focus on exactly what point of your body is supposed to be completing the roll at a time. Think in your head as you do this, shoulders, ribs, tummy, butt, legs, feet. Shoulders, ribs, tummy, butt, leg, feet. Shoulders, ribs, tummy, butt, leg, feet. And I really encourage you to do this over and over again. I do it still six years into mermaiding because it helps me warm up and get my brain in the right space to know exactly how and where my body is moving. There you have it, folks. Those are my three techniques for you that you can use to get down the mermaid dolphin kick in a snap. We've got the belly dance method, wall method, and the go and pause. Good luck. Next, let's talk about red flags. What are some pitfalls that you can fall into as a new mermaid just starting out or as somebody even down the line who's established a habit you might want to break? None of these things are wrong or incorrect. I'm just teaching you the competitive swimming technique to do the dolphin kick. Feel free to put your own twist on it. I just want you to know about them and why they might potentially be pitfalls, slow you down, or hinder your swimming. How you doing, Geralt? Enjoying the video? He says, all right, the biggest red flag is bent knees. Swim coaches, the ones that I had, the one my sister, my grandma, my mom, my aunt had, always said, don't bend your knees because it's actually gonna slow you down. Here's how that works. After extending your knees after a kick, you need to pull them back in again in order to re-extend them. That action of pulling them back in again actually moves you backwards underwater. So it's very similar to taking two steps forward and one step back. Outside of the competitive swimming world, I think the reason why most professional mermaids advise against this is because it doesn't look like the natural way that fish and dolphins swim. They tend to make that S motion. It's very graceful, beautiful, and I think that's why most mermaids tend to lean into that way instead of the bent knee kick. So bent knees can, to some people, look less graceful, but it definitely does make you go slower. The second big red flag I'll let you know about is the 
inchworm. The inchworm is when people jolt their head down and their hips straight up and they go back and forth like that over and over again. And I think this comes from trying to lead with your head and not your shoulders, which is the reason why I advise to lead with your shoulders because it will prevent this exact pitfall. Leading with the head causes huge sweeping movements rather than small isolated ones. The huge movement causes this big clunky wave to travel through our body, which just isn't that long and makes us kind of end up looking like an inchworm. When we begin the dolphin kick at our shoulders, that naturally makes the process look a lot more isolated and small. This creates a much more streamlined and stretched out kick that looks a little bit more graceful. Number two. All right, now that you know kind of the technique behind the dolphin kick and what some pitfalls might be that you might fall into, let's talk about style. Yeah, style, baby. <laughs> so there are infinite numbers of styles to do the dolphin kick, and I encourage you to have some fun with it. But there are two main styles that most mermaids choose between, and they are the streamlined look with your hands above your head or swimming with your arms by your side. Streamlined swimming with your arms above your head is really good for going fast. It's what competitive swimmers like Michael Phelps do because it helps eliminate drag from the top of your head, your shoulders hitting the water first. Instead, it's your arms straight out in front of you that encourage the water to flow across your hands, your arms before hitting your head. Some mermaids will tell you that swimming with your arms above your head in a streamlined style should start the dolphin kick at your hands. I disagree. Here's why. If you're trying to go for the classic competitive fluid fish-like motion of Michael Phelps, then it needs to start at your shoulders. Not your fingers, not your arms, not your head, your shoulders. And this is coming straight from what my dive and swim coach told me way back in high school. Hands and arms should stay perfectly still out above your head. Because if you're trying to eliminate drag, you shouldn't be moving your arms around. <laughs> if you move your hands around like this, you naturally add more surface area to, for water to push back on. I also find that mermaids who tend to do this put a lot of focus into their fingers and their arms looking really fluid and smooth instead of focusing on the rest of your body and your tail, which is what everyone is looking at. So I think for me personally, when I'm swimming with my arms above my head, I keep them stick straight like how Michael Phelps and other competitive swimmers do because I want to emphasize the fluid motion of my body and tail. Again, if you want to wiggle your fingers while you do the streamline look, that's fine. It's just, it's not what I do um, and it's not what swim coaches teach. So the second style we're going to talk about today is with your arms to the side. Now this is naturally going to be a lot slower because there's a lot more drag with your head and your shoulders hitting the water first instead of your smaller hands. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, you probably know this is how I swim. It's just because when I think of mermaids, underwater I picture them with their arms more relaxed and able to like pick things up or like hand things to each other or like collect things I just don't envision a, a mermaid smacking her arms above her head the instant she's like well gotta get out of bed now <laughs> that's not what I think she would do that's just me <laughs> my camera died and I'm completely lost what were we talking about Probably the biggest pro to swimming with your arms by the side is that if you're performing, people can see your face and your hair and your crown. And as if you're a performer, you know that this is very, very valuable. It's what I choose to do because I think it works best with my persona, but arms above your head, arms by your side, doesn't matter. You do what feels good to you, am I right? So pro tips, here we go. Are you ready? Get ready because these are gonna blow your mind they're not gonna blow your mind because if you've been watching this far in the video, you've already heard me say them a couple of times. But we're gonna make them really clear. We're gonna spell them out so you remember them and then you can look like a beautiful Daryl Hannah swimming in the ocean to meet your Brad Pitt. Was it Brad Pitt? I think it was Brad Pitt. I don't know. Anyway, number one, I say this all the time, literally all the time. The slower you go, the more graceful you look. Why? Need evidence? Roll the montage. It's not a game. It's a red
two, start from the shoulders, forget the rest. If you can focus on beginning each and every kick in your shoulders, the rest will come. Just think about the shoulders, start from the shoulders, forget the rest. If you wanna go fast, if you've gotta catch a kid or you're playing mermaid fetch, put your hands above your head, you'll go faster. I promise. So does Michael Phelps. <laughs> Number four, above all, remember that mermaiding is very individual and you should swim the way you believe mermaids would actually look like. The most important thing above all is that you have fun and you practice. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe and share and tell your friends. And if you want any other tutorials and other mermaidy things, please leave me a comment below. I read them all. I really hope this helped you. It was a lot of fun for me to make. Geralt's like, let's wrap this up. So we're gonna. <laughs> As always, I see you, I love you, I need you, and best fishes from Mermaid Echo. Mwah! I hope that works. I don't think that works. Hi. <laughs> Hello. You're on video. Huh? You're on video. Where's the video? Oh.